That, once again, guys, was One Voice by the K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band. You know we like these guys. K. Daniels and the Spirit, K. the K. Daniels Spirit and Truth Worship Band is a great band to listen to. So, with that being said, let's get into Pastor Barry's message, the study of the book of Ecclesiastes. That we have here today, our Heavenly Father, that are here to worship you, our Heavenly Father. We thank you for looking after us and take care of us, our Heavenly Father, this last week. We pray for our young people in the military, our Heavenly Father. Look after each and every one of them, bring them home safely to us, our Heavenly Father. We pray for the leadership of the country, our Heavenly Father. We pray your will be done through them, our Heavenly Father. We thank you for the opportunity to be here to learn more of your word, our Heavenly Father. Open our hearts and our minds. And we thank you for Pastor Barry, our Heavenly Father, our teacher. And these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Everyone remember to pray for Valerie and John every day as they go through this facet of the chemo treatment for cancer. We pass these around. Every, everyone take one. I don't want to touch it because I don't want to touch it. Take, give me one and give it to you. Because I have my friend. It's okay. Is this new? This is new. Okay. Thank you. This is new. New papers, Janice. <laughs> 
Can I make one or two? <coughs> sure. Uh, Fanny has been in the hospital since last Thursday. Yeah, I announced it. Oh, I <laughs> Sorry, I don't feel okay. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm helping you now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just all helping you. <laughs> okay, okay, Dennis. Do you have your hearing aid turned up or do you have it in? She lost it. Yeah, no, no, she's not going to answer. <laughs> they're, they're turned on. They're turned on. They're, they're, this, this friend of mine um, got hearing aids a, a few years ago. Anyway, he'd been hunting for years and years. And he said, Barry. He said, I never knew there was so much noise in the woods until I went out with my hearing aids on. <laughs> so anyway. That's what I found when I first got my hearing aids. Yeah, so, I didn't know there was so much noise. My dad couldn't wear his. He didn't want to hear the refrigerator on. He didn't want to hear the faucet drip. <laughs> <laughs> he could go outside and listen to the birds. There you go. Okay. So, uh, I don't know how many times I may be in for John here, but remember to pray every day for John and Valerie. Uh, so, I've hit you a couple times uh, when I've been filling in here with the book of Ecclesiastes. And uh, this fall, it'll be one of the electives offered. Uh, and so we're working on the syllabus, putting it together. So what you guys got the first couple times around were like a couple of pieces out of the center of the book of Ecclesiastes. Eileen gets mad at me that, that when um, I cut a pie, you know, you cut a pie in pieces... I like to pull the piece out, and then I eat the leftovers in the, around the center. It's great to take the end off the... Or a pizza! All the good stuff is in the center of the pizza. So, so we kind of reached into the middle of Ecclesiastes and pulled out some of the good stuff in the middle, and that's what I handed out to you the last couple of times. Now, I realize there's some people here this, now that weren't here then, so next time I come back, I'll bring some of that. So I thought every time I fill in for John, we'll do Ecclesiastes. And so I thought it was time that we actually started at the beginning and looked at the whole book as a whole. And then since we took several good pieces out of the middle of it. And so this sheet, um, and again, I didn't have another sheet to print off of last night. This is what... Well, this is, this is what the one I'm using looks like. I happen to have a clean one that I could give to George to print. So, um, in Ecclesiastes, uh, there's a fourfold message of the book. And the, the, uh, what you have here is part one of that fourfold message. So, what I'd like to do this morning is just flip this over, and guys, right on the back. And hopefully, the next time I come, I'll have that printed out. I can hand it to you. But what you have today is part one of this fourfold message of the book of Ecclesiastes. And I'd like to at least give them to you, so if you feel like writing them down, you can. And so number one, Ecclesiastes, or Koalath, the preacher, as he's called, and remember that Koalath means one who assembles a group together to teach them. And so he's, he's the teacher in, in Jerusalem, Solomon. He's going to identify himself this morning in the passage we read. And so, part one of his big fourfold message of the book of Ecclesiastes, part one is, no human enterprise under the sun is sufficient to meet our life needs. There's nothing, We remember we talked about the contrast in Ecclesiastes with life under the sun, S-U-N, normal life apart from knowing God, apart from Christ, and then life under the sun, S-O-N, Living life, knowing Christ, knowing God personally. Um, and by the way, I heard a speaker the other day say this. <laughs> he related it in a way that I've thought about several times. He said, "He said I accepted Christ as my Savior, and now I realize I had the God of the universe living inside me. He said, I was 18 years old. That's really heady stuff for an 18-year-old. The God who created the world is now living inside me. And so that's life under the sun, S-O-N. And so that's the big big contrast in the book that we have to get. But in that, no human enterprise under the sun is sufficient to meet our life needs. No human activity, no human endeavor, no human direction. I'm glad for our brother here sharing his past. 
nothing we can ever try in this world is ever going to make us happy, is ever going to fulfill us, is ever going to make us satisfied. Um, Janice is sharing parts of her testimony at times, and you know, part of my testimony is God gave me a life worth living. I didn't have a life worth living before I knew him. I didn't know that. I didn't know that because I bought into everything America. You work hard, you do well, you be success, you say, you, you know, everything that's along that. I didn't realize that there's this huge contrast in that way of thinking, which is really hidden, hedonism. We're taught to live for ourselves. I didn't know that working hard, going to work, you know, making money, being a good family, that that was just all self-centered. Because the Bible message is we were given our lives to live for other people. To do something for other people. We weren't given our lives just to live for ourselves. So, at any rate, that's part one of this fourfold message. Part two is what life needs is supplied by God for our appropriation. Now, if you don't want to put for our appropriation in there. What life needs is supplied by God. No human enterprise will meet our needs. What life does need is supplied by God. Stability, time, physical, moral, spiritual, life values, everything comes from God. Part number three, the physical part of life must be subordinated to the spiritual. Now, this is hard to sort out sometimes in Ecclesiastes because there's a lot physical in there. Solomon tells about all the stuff he did in his life and how much he enjoyed it but how much he realized on the other hand. And sometimes it's hard to sort out as you're making your way through there all the different statements he's making. That's why a lot of people get really confused in Ecclesiastes. They just go, oh my gosh, I can't make this out. On one hand, he's saying, you, you know, don't do this because it's purely emptiness. And on the other hand, he talks about doing it and how you should be happy in everything you do. Which is it? It's both. It's absolutely both. And in that... You know, the physical part of life has to be subordinated to the spiritual. And so uh, that's part three. And then part four of the book of Ecclesiastes is strong dependence on providence is required or strong dependence on the sovereignty of God is required. I think the old theologians um, called it providence was really the sovereignty of God, how God worked in in all things. So those are the four parts of the I whole big you book. Know, you're, you're, you're flying through it. We can't hit right steps. I'm flying through it? Yeah. Well, the third and fourth one is better. Okay, third. <laughs> the physical part of life must be subordinated subordinated to the spiritual. And then number four is strong dependence on providence is required, or strong dependence on sovereignty is required. Okay, is that um, that's number four? Yeah, well, yes, that's A, B, C, and D. <laughs> that is it. Or Roman numerals one, two, three, and four. Okay. When it shows up, when it shows up on the outline, it's going to show up A, B, C, and D. I think. I'm not sure. Defining providence. Well, okay. Here's my favorite story about providence. Uh, uh, oh gosh, uh, founder of the Plymouth Bay Colony. Help me here. Miles Standish was his army guy, the founder of the Plymouth Bay Colony, Plymouth Rock. Oh, uh, gosh. Miles Standish was the military guy that kept order. I'll, I'll think of it in a minute. John, wasn't John Winthrop. Uh, anyway, I can't think of it. Okay, his name, his name will come back to us here. But in the founding of that, <coughs> one winter, <laughs> well, several things happened. One, one winter they, they, they found the Indians' stash of corn that the Indians had put aside for the whole winter. So they stole it all. 